Aggression against Belarus will mean aggression against the Russian Federation. We will respond to it with all means at our disposal. That was the stark warning Vladimir Putin delivered to Poland in July 2023. It came after tensions started mounting between Poland and Belarus, with the latter's military making strange moves that culminated in Poland rushing troops to its eastern borders in August 2023. Ostensibly, this was to shore up defenses after accusing Belarus of violating its airspace with its military helicopters. That move also came in the wake of comments from Belarus's leader, Alexander Lukashenko. The pro-Russian leader was quick to taunt Poland when mercenaries from the infamous Russian Wagner Group arrived in his country, telling Poland that those mercs were stationed near the border the two countries share. For its part, Belarus claims that the helicopter violations didn't happen. Its defense ministry posted on Telegram that Poland's statement wasn't backed up by data coming out of the country, going so far as to say it was treating Poland's claims in the same manner as an old wives' tale. Still, it's clear that tensions exist. And if those tensions boil over, leading to Poland launching an attack on Belarus or vice versa, they would likely lead to an all-out war between Russia and Poland. So, the question we pose in today's video is simple. If Poland and Russia go to war, who would come out on top? On the surface, it seems like any war would result in a fairly easy victory for Russia. It certainly has the advantage in pure numbers, both in terms of troops and equipment, when stacked up against Poland side by side. Remember the story of David and Goliath? If that tale caught your interest, you're going to want to hear what's next. We're about to dive into some surprising elements, including the introduction of new weaponry, upgrades to existing arsenal, and 240 Leopard tanks. Let's dive into what Poland, our proverbial underdog, is truly facing first. And remember, in the fog of war, appearances can be deceiving. According to Global Firepower, or GFP, Russia is the second strongest military power in the world. Poland falls a fair distance behind, coming in at 21st in GFP's ranking of 145 countries, and it certainly doesn't have the manpower to compete with Russia. Its army is less than a sixth of Russia's size, with Poland boasting 202,100 active personnel to Russia's 1.32 million. Poland does have extensive reserves, with 350,000 people ready to join its active military if the need came, but so does Russia. A staggering 2 million people sit on Russia's military bench, meaning it will be capable of bringing 3 million troops to the fight compared to Poland's 552,100 if a war broke out. Bad news for Poland. We also can't forget the paramilitary side of the conflict. Russia is littered with independent fighting cells and mercenary groups, including the aforementioned Wagner Group, that technically operate independently of Moscow but are likely to join the fighting in a war with Poland. Those groups add another 250,000 to Russia's numbers, while Poland only has 50,000 paramilitary forces. Cast your eye onto the equipment side of a war, and Russia comes out on top again. It has nearly 10 times the air power of Poland, with over 4,200 aircraft in its fleet compared to Poland's 468. That includes a substantially higher number of fighters, 809 to Poland's 59, and almost 10 times more transport planes. Russia also has 559 attack helicopters to Poland's meager 30 and 136 more planes designated for special missions. On land, Russia blows Poland out of the water with sheer numbers too. It has 14,777 tanks compared to Poland's 613, as well as over 140,000 more armored vehicles. Russia has thousands more towed artillery units, as well as more than 5,500 self-propelled artillery units along with 2,800 more mobile rocket projectors. The picture being painted doesn't look any prettier for Poland from a naval perspective. Russia's massive fleet numbers 781 ships, meaning it has the world's largest navy. Poland's 45 ships leave it at 53rd in the world, with Russia having more aircraft carriers, submarines, destroyers, frigates, and corvettes. The only place where Poland even comes close to competing is in the mine warfare stakes, as almost half of its navy, 21 ships, are dedicated to planting mines in its waters. But even then, Russia comes out on top, as it has 47 mine warfare units. All signs point to an easy victory for Russia. Poland essentially shares two borders with Russia, the Kaliningrad exclave and Poland's border with Belarus, which Lukashenko would likely be more than happy to allow Putin to use in a war with Poland. Plus, Poland's flat geography means that Putin would be able to maximize his superior ground forces, mobilizing thousands of tanks in the process to attack Poland. But the victory wouldn't be as easy as it seems. 
In fact, if war were to break out between Poland and Russia, Poland would likely dominate the conflict to the point where Putin is sent back to Moscow with his tail between his legs. At this juncture, you're probably asking yourself how that could be possible. Poland's military is weaker in every way, so it would surely have no chance of repelling Russia's forces. How could it possibly win? The answer starts with one key advantage Poland has over Russia. It's diplomatic ties. Over the past few years, Poland has been working hard to shore up its defenses, both militaristically and in terms of its relationships with other countries. Starting small with relationships, it's recently started to rebuild the long-dormant Weimar Triangle, a military alliance between France, Germany and Poland. The Weimar Triangle was created in 1991 with the intention of boosting cooperation between the three countries. That cooperation extends beyond the military, with all three sharing scientific and cultural achievements. It was through this group that Poland created the Weimar Battle Group in 2011 giving it a unit of 1,700 specially trained soldiers that would operate under its command. But through much of the 2010s beyond that, the Weimar Triangle lay dormant, with cooperation between the three key European states being somewhat limited. Now the triangle is being rebuilt. In February 2024, Poland's Prime Minister Donald Tusk journeyed to Paris to speak to France's President Emmanuel Macron before moving on to Berlin to meet with Olaf Scholz, the German Chancellor. His goal was simple – start rebuilding relationships with two countries that had long been allies. Those relationships have been cold since 2016, with the German Marshall Fund of the United States, or GMFUS, claiming that temperatures with Berlin were polar, thanks in large part to Poland's previous leaders using hardline and often anti-German rhetoric to achieve political victory. That era of Polish politics ended with the rise of Tusk, who is much more willing to cooperate with his allies in Berlin, meaning the Weimar Triangle is in the process of defrosting. It's believed that Tusk's meetings in Paris and Berlin focused on clarifying the security and defense architecture of Europe. So a good diplomatic start, perhaps, but the revival of a long-dormant military alliance is far from enough to stop the Russian war machine. Besides, if Putin decides to invade Poland, the Weimar Triangle doesn't guarantee that France or Germany will come to Warsaw's aid. That's very true, but Tusk's efforts to thaw out the Weimar Triangle are indicative of his work to strengthen Poland's ties with the rest of Europe. For years, Poland's PIS party used anti-Europe rhetoric to achieve political dominance in the country. It got so bad in the run-up to the October 2023 elections that saw Donald Tusk rise to power, Tusk claimed that PIS would work to take Poland out of the European Union if it were to achieve a victory that would see it lead for a third term. PIS denied this, claiming it had no interest in a supposed polexit. However, in the wake of Putin's war in Ukraine, the anti-Europe rhetoric the party used to rise to power was no longer as appealing as it had once been. Recognizing the need for unity with potential military partners, Polish voters started to stray away from PIS. Following the October elections, PIS still held the popular vote, just. It came away with the majority of votes, though it didn't receive enough seats to win outright. It needed a coalition to form a government. It couldn't form one. That set the stage for Tusk and his civic platform party to team up with the Third Way, a centrist right party to take control in Poland. That coalition's stated aim is to maintain Poland's security in the wake of rising Russian aggression. PIS claimed the same, However, Tusk's approach is far more pro-Europe, as the former Civic Platform Party leader Danuta Hubner points out. She now serves as an MEP in the European Parliament, as well as serving as Poland's former Europe minister, and her message was clear in an October 2023 interview with France 24. Poland is back in the European Union and in the world, and the real Poland, democratic Poland, is also back. The idea of Polexit is gone. That's huge for Poland's chances in a war with Russia. With its relationship with the other 26 members of the European Union, or EU, being rebuilt, Poland will be able to rely on the organization to support it should it enter a war with Russia. But again, that support may not come militarily, at least not directly. It's far more likely that the EU would offer financial support, along with sending military equipment into Poland, to support its war effort. We'd also likely see the EU implementing sanctions against Russia should war arise. It's already used sanctions to great effect in relation to the war in Ukraine. Thus far, the EU's restrictive measures have been applied to 419 Russian entities, as well as 1,706 individuals, including Putin himself and many of his high-ranking officials. Those sanctions extend to Russia's banks, political parties, and even some of its paramilitary forces, such as the Wagner Group. 
Combined, this has led to about $23.5 billion in Russia's assets being frozen in the EU, with over $328 billion in assets owned by the Central Bank of Russia being blocked within EU and G7 countries. The EU may not be able to go much further in terms of the level of sanctions it's implementing, but it could certainly extend them even if Putin's war in Ukraine ends should Russia start a fight with Poland. So we're slowly starting to see Poland's strategy for dominating Russia, at least diplomatically, emerge. The revival of the Weimar Triangle saw it reform what could be a powerful military alliance with France and Germany. And with Tusk now serving as Prime Minister, Poland's relationship with the EU will improve to the point where it will be able to rely on it to implement sanctions and provide financial aid, at the very least in the event of a Russian invasion. But Poland has one more diplomatic string to its bow – NATO membership. In 2019, Poland celebrated its 20th year of NATO membership. It's a membership that's still going strong, with 70% of the country's people believing that it has improved the country's security, and as a NATO member, Poland benefits from Article 5 of the NATO Charter. Why is that important? Article 5 states that any armed attack on a NATO ally is considered an attack on every other member of NATO. In response to that attack, NATO's members agree to take whatever action they deem necessary to counter the attack. Those measures include, though aren't limited to, the use of force to defend the member that has come under attack. It's essentially the Three Musketeers approach, all for one and one for all. If a Russian invasion of Poland took place, Putin wouldn't just have Poland to contend with. It would also have 31 other countries, most with strong militaries of their own, that would join the war. Those countries include the United States, one of the few in the world that can match or exceed Russia's sheer military might, meaning Poland's diplomatic ties would ensure that it can defend against and likely repel a Russian attack far better than Ukraine has managed. Poland is also one of the biggest contributors to the NATO purse. In fact, according to the World Population Review, it's the biggest contributor, at least in terms of the percentage of GDP spent on defenses. In 2021 alone, Poland spent 3.9% of its GDP on its military, with the US coming in second at 3.49%. So if Russia invaded Poland, then the United States would have to stand with the rest of NATO members to defend it. Poland's position is already looking much better. Though Russia has the advantage in sheer size and military strength when fighting Poland alone, it can't compete with all of NATO. Even if the US was the only nation to enter the war in Poland's support, Russia would likely be destroyed. But there's more. Beyond its many diplomatic advantages, Poland also has the upper hand in some militaristic aspects that could help it to win. One of those advantages lies in the country's geography. Earlier we told you that Poland is a fairly flat country, which would make it a good candidate for invasion by Russia's enormous fleet of tanks. That is indeed the case, with Russia also being in a position where it could utilize two borders with Poland to launch its invasion, its own, and the border Belarus shares with Poland. However, Russia would be limited to that ground-based approach. Above Poland lies the Baltic Sea, which is part of the Atlantic Ocean but is essentially enclosed and surrounded by multiple countries. Russia and Belarus are two of those countries, potentially providing a naval approach into Polish territory. However, the other countries that border the Baltic Sea include Poland, Sweden, Germany, Finland and Denmark, all of whom are NATO members. If Russia wants to bring its 781-vessel strong navy to bear against Poland, it has to run a sea-based gauntlet of NATO member countries that would buffet it from all sides. The combination of those countries would come close to putting Poland's navy on par with Russia's. After all, Finland has 246 naval assets, with Sweden owning 353, potentially adding almost 600 ships to Poland's defenses before we even consider Germany and Denmark. Of course, not all of those ships, on either side, would enter the Baltic Sea. But thanks to its NATO alliances, Poland would essentially be able to blockade the one seaborne passageway into the country that's open to Russia, potentially fighting Putin's navy to a standstill and preventing him from using Poland's ports as a possible entry route. That would limit his invasion to the borders Poland shares with Belarus and Kaliningrad, which Poland could turn into choke points with the help of its NATO allies. Add to all of this, Poland's September 2023 agreement to purchase four naval strike missile coastal defense system squadrons, which come with several hundred missiles from Kongsberg Defense and Aerospace, and you have a clear naval strategy emerging. Tie Russia up in the Baltic Sea with the help of its NATO allies while obliterating any Russian ships that get close to Poland with anti-ship missiles. Still, Russia has the on-land route. 
And though it likely wouldn't be able to get its aircraft carriers anywhere near Poland without them becoming major targets, it could still potentially coordinate airstrikes from Kaliningrad and Belarus to supplement its ground forces. Knowing this, it should come as no surprise that Poland has beefed up its military spending in recent years. We mentioned earlier that Poland dedicated 3.9% of its GDP to defense spending in 2021, making it the leading NATO contributor in terms of percentage of GDP spent. That spending represented a near doubling of its defense budget compared to 2020, and Warsaw hasn't slowed down since then. Where 2021 saw Poland spend $15.1 billion on its military, 2022 brought with it an increase of over $1.4 billion, bringing defense spending to $16.573 billion. The point is that Poland is committed to putting its money where its mouth is when it comes to defense. But granted, this spending pales in comparison to Russia's. Putin intends to plow $140 billion into Russia's military in 2024, representing a 29% rise in the country's spending in 2023, meaning Moscow has far more money at its disposal when it comes to funding a war. However, Putin also has to contend with the previously mentioned sanctions that are slowly eroding Russia's economy. Poland doesn't. In fact, its own budget will be supplemented by funds from its allies in NATO and the EU. Plus, Poland's economy is on the rise, and has been for years, to the point where it's likely to overtake Britain in terms of GDP per capita by 2030 if it's able to maintain the 3.6% annual growth it's currently enjoying. It would be inaccurate to claim that Poland can beat Russia in terms of spending. But it's not that far behind, as the figures presented suggest, especially when you consider additional funding that would come from its allies, and it has a powerful economy that will help it to sustain high spending levels if a war erupts. Beyond purchasing new arms, such as the missile systems mentioned earlier, Poland has also been spending smart by upgrading its aging military equipment so it's capable of taking on what Russia has to offer. That includes a recent upgrade to its Leopard tank fleet that will bring the 240 Leopards it has to a point where they're capable of taking out Russian tanks. That's an important move, especially if information from the national interest is to be believed. In a 2019 article, the organization pointed out that the majority of Poland's tank fleet, including the T-72M1s and other T-72 variants that make up the majority of its tank forces, would likely fall to Russia's more modern T-80 UK, T-90 and T-90A tanks. The country's Leopard tanks, mostly consisting of Leopard 2A4s, wouldn't fare much better which is why Poland is spending heavily to transform those tanks into Leopard 2PL variants. Those upgrades should keep Poland's Leopard tanks in service for around 30 more years thanks to improved turret armor packages, thermal cameras, and gun breaches. That, combined with a strategy that could see it spend more on surplus Leopard 2A4s to upgrade, could see Poland develop a tank force that's capable of taking on Russia's best in terms of technology, if not numbers, without spending as much as it would on simply buying new tanks. And again, you can add tanks that would come in from other countries to this increasingly modernized fleet to enable Poland to create a choke point across its borders with Belarus and Kaliningrad. Remember, Poland isn't looking to invade Russia. Any war that took place would be a result of Russian aggression, meaning Putin has to fight on Poland's home turf. Warsaw will take advantage of that fact by cutting off a naval invasion, leveraging its allies, and using its modernized tanks to try to pin Russia at its shared borders. That would limit the number of tanks Putin could bring to bear, giving Poland a chance to pick off ground forces as they attempt to invade. What's more, Russia's impressive military numbers hide the fact that a lot of its equipment is outdated. In an April 2023 report published by CNN, Russia will likely have to dip into its Cold War stocks of tanks and artillery to keep the war in Ukraine running. After all, it had already lost 10,000 pieces of equipment in the fighting by that point and has likely lost much more in the 11 months since the article's publication. The loss of over 500 T-72 B-3 tanks by early 2023 is particularly damaging. It means Russia may have to start relying on its older tanks. And if that's all it has left when it tries to invade Poland, then Warsaw's own T-72 variants would be right back in the fight. CNN's article also brings us to the final advantage Poland would have in a war with Russia. The Ukraine war has taken a massive toll on Russia's military. Regardless of whether or not Putin eventually comes out on top in that war, it's lasted far longer than he ever anticipated. What was meant to be a smash-and-grab exercise that would see Russia take Ukraine in a matter of months has extended into a conflict that's raged for over two years at the time of this video's creation, and may go on for several more years if Ukraine continues to receive support from its allies. That bodes well for Poland. 
According to the General Staff of the Armed Forces of Ukraine, Russia has already lost 414,680 troops in its invasion of Ukraine. That amounts to around a third of its active military, though the numbers aren't clear about whether they include paramilitary fighters. However, we do know that Ukraine counts around 180,000 Russian dead in those numbers, with the rest being troops that have either been injured to the point of being taken out of action or have gone missing during the fighting. Ukraine also claims to have destroyed 6,610 tanks in the fighting, along with over 12,500 armored personnel vehicles. Add to that 345 destroyed Russian planes, along with 325 helicopters and 25 boats, and you have a grim picture being painted for Russia. Of course, you may want to take those figures with a pinch of salt. They come directly from Ukraine, so there's a possibility that the numbers have been inflated. Numbers from more neutral sources, such as the International Institute for Strategic Studies, or IISS, suggest that Russia has lost close to 8,800 armored fighting vehicles, rather than 12,500, for instance. However, there's no denying one simple fact. Russia has already lost a ton of personnel and equipment in Ukraine, with much of the equipment being among the more modern stock that it has. To invade Poland now would see it relying on Cold War tech that, when stacked against Poland's modernizing military machine and the equipment it would receive from its allies, would add up to a bad outcome for Putin. To have any chance of a successful invasion, Russia would likely need to rebuild its stockpiles substantially, modernizing in the process after winning the war in Ukraine to defeat Poland. It may just do that. But the odds are that Poland will still come out on top. Combine its increasingly powerful military with the ability to create land-based choke points and essentially cut off Russia's navy, and you have a definite defensive strategy in play. Diplomatically, Poland stands on far firmer ground than Russia too, thanks to its alliances in NATO and the EU, as well as the Weimar Triangle. Should Russia invade Polish territory, it could potentially face the combined might of over 30 countries, including the United States, in response. Of course, Putin has allies of his own to call upon. China, for instance, has maintained close ties with Russia, even as the global community condemns its invasion of Ukraine. But it's telling that China hasn't directly involved itself in the war, with its support seemingly coming in the form of covertly providing some equipment to support Putin's troops. And that's against a country that isn't part of NATO. Poland's NATO membership means it can rely on major military powers such as the US to come to its aid in a Russian invasion. China will want no part of that fight, perhaps even seeing it as an opportunity to take advantage of a weakened Russia to spread its own influence. Ultimately, Russia will be able to defeat Poland in a one-on-one -on -one fight. The war would be long and would see Russia lose even more troops and equipment, but it would likely come out on top just by having the ability to throw more at Poland than its defenses could withstand. But Russia wouldn't be fighting just Poland. It would be fighting dozens of countries, all supporting Warsaw in various ways, with a depleted military, which is precisely why Poland wouldn't just win a war with Russia that starts today. Poland would dominate. But what do you think? Is Poland in such a strong position that it would be able to fend off Russian aggression? Perhaps you think that nuclear weapons would play a role in the conflict, in which case would Putin dare use them, knowing that Poland is allied with the US, UK and France, all nations with their own nuclear stockpiles? Tell us what you think in the comments. Now go and check how Poland is preparing for full-scale war against Russia, or click this other video instead.